Alrighty, hey everybody. If you're seeing this video, we're going to talk about some cool HRV stuff and all of that and stuff I've been doing to heal my heart and my body and my mind. And we're going to go through a little bit of science and some devices I'm using and how to interpret the data and patterns and reconditioning. And we'll try to keep it short. I'm recording this using an app called Record It, which lets me do my screen and also, um, and also voice at the same time. So one of the concepts I've become fascinated with in the past, I don't know, couple months is something called HRV and specifically coherence. So HRV is the science of measuring the, not the heart rate, which is, okay, within one minute I had 60 beats. It's the specific difference between your heart beats. And there's a ton of, ton of really, really, really cool data that you can get on this. So you can see that it's measuring the RR interval, the difference or the, the measurement between the beats of your heart right here. And these slight variations correlate extremely well to autonomic nervous system function. So within HRV, heart rate variability, there's a specific state called coherence. And coherence is, uh, you can see here, it's best explained just with an image. Whenever you're in these states of frustration, anxiety, worry, irritation, um, there's even studies um, that show that the heart knows things before the brain does. The heart reacts before the brain does and before your conscious mind understands things. And what's so cool about HRV is no matter what kind of trauma you have, as, as long as you have control over your breathing in and your breathing out, period, you can affect the biology of your body through your breathing. You can change your brain state. You can change your heart rhythm and you can get into these extremely powerful self-healing states. And I'm going to show all that to you here shortly. So you can see above uh, incoherence uh, associated with frustration, anxiety, worry. And you can see as you breathe in, your heart rate is, it naturally increases. And then as you breathe out, it naturally decreases. So this is what we're looking at. And you want to create a heart rhythm pattern like is on the bottom. And the way that I do this specifically, you can get started, is by breathing in for six seconds and then breathing out for six seconds and when you do this, make sure that that curve at the, at the bottom of your out breath and the top of your uh, or the top of your out breath and the top of your in breath, whatever it is, is very smooth. And that will help to kind of smooth out these um, curves. You see, it'll never be exactly, you know, necessarily perfect, but um, there's that. So talked about HR, what HRV is and what coherence is. Now, I want to talk to you about the cool device that I'm using to measure this. And a lot of people will go, oh, well, I have a, uh, I have a Fitbit or I have a, a this or that. And I chose to get this device called the Polar. And all of the different devices have a different level of uh, accuracy based on where and how they are measuring in the body. If you want to go ultra deep on this, you can look at the Elite HRV podcast. And they talk about the different algorithms that are used to calculate HRV because there are a couple different ones out there. Um, so anyways, I went with this Polar one because it has extremely high polling rate. It was easy to use. It fit everything that I needed. Um, normally, it retails for around $80, but I got mine used on Facebook Marketplace for $33 shipped, which is amazing. So this is an article from dcrainmaker.com. You just search DC Rainmaker and then Polar H10, and you will find this article. And he does an extremely in-depth comparison, and we're going to get into the apps here in a second, of um, of these different devices. So you can see he compared the Whoop, he compared the Apple Watch Series 7, the Polar H10, and Polar Verity Sense. And you can see the different uh, levels of accuracy. You can see them all overlaid here. And he does um, an analysis here um, that you can get really deep into. So you can see, for example, the Whoop actually on this one for heart rate was very slow at reporting, which is very, um, very interesting. Now, another problem a lot with, or that, that often comes up with these heart rate monitor devices is that they will under report. And if they're under reporting your heart rate, that is a, quite dangerous, especially if you have a heart problem, because if you are looking to this device for exercise and then you're looking and you're saying, Oh, my, my heart rate is 120. I'm good, but it's actually, you know, 130 or 140, you could end up in a serious problem. So long story short, you can go look at this article and get ultra deep, but Polar H10 is what I recommend for this. 
Now let's talk about the um, let's talk about the power of coherent states. So this is a study from the HeartMath Institute uh, with Roland McCready and a couple other cool people, and it says modulation of DNA confirmation by heart focused intention. And what this means is what they did in this experiment was they took a set of people and they had them in a not coherent state. They had no training. And then they took other people who were in a coherent state and they took isolated DNA and they did what's called denaturing it. Whenever you cook a steak, the protein in it becomes denatured. It becomes damaged. And so just like when you're out, you know, exposed to extreme radiation or uh, EMF or any, any stresses in life, your DNA uh, changes in, in how like accurate it is. So we can see experimental method. Let's see. ECG measurements, heart measurements were recorded and analyzed for coherence. The heart math trained participants for each performed a trial in three different conditions. Heart focused state, while in a heart focused state with no intention, and then in a normal state, but with the intention to control the or to change the DNA, and you can see here that um, that they measured the confirmation of the DNA of each individual sample before and after with this heart-focused intention. And what they were able to do is the people who were in the coherent state were actually basically able to like restructure or to heal the DNA purely by their intention but only when they were in a coherence state. So here's a study of people affecting DNA outside of their body when they're in a coherent state. This is um, a book called Mind to Matter by Dawson Church. I found a PDF online. It's a wonderful read, and I highly encourage you to go buy the book, but I wanted to show you something specific out of here. And this is another study where... Uh, both Dawson Church, his wife, and also some experiments with Qigong master named Dr. Uh, Yan Jin projects qi or life energy onto his patients. Scientists at the Institute of High Energy Physics, part of Chinese Academy of Sciences, put Dr. Yan's powers to a rigid, rigorous subjective test. They asked him to alter the rate of decay of a tiny 2 millimeter American Americium 241 uh, disc in a plexiglass container. One of the fundamental forces of physics, the decay of radioactive substances is immune to high temperatures, strong acids, massive electronic fields, or extreme pressures. For the first eight sessions, Dr. Yan projected qi energy onto the americium for 20 minutes while staying nearby. The second americium disc was used as a control. He was able to change the rate of decay of radioactive alpha particles in the target disc while leaving the control disc unchanged. He could either slow down or speed up the radioactive or the, the decay rate, which was requested, uh, whichever was requested. And for the next three sessions, they placed him at 100 or 200 meters away from the source and no difference in results. Then they tested a distant city over, at over 1,500 kilometers away and eventually moving to 2,200 kilometers away. A series of 39 additional trials showed that he was able to produce the same effect as he could from standing in the same room. So this is how powerful energy and intention and coherence is, is that you can change DNA you can affect radioactive decay rates with the pure intention of your mind. So I want you to understand, and I've showed you two studies on how powerful your mind and how powerful this energy is. So now let's talk about how I'm using this on a day-to-day -day basis. So I have two apps. One is called Elite HRV and then Polar Beat. So I'm going to first talk about Elite HRV and how I'm doing my daily readiness measurements and then I will talk about how I'm doing my exercise. So every morning I get up around 6.40 to 7.30 and I put on my Polar H10 strap and I take a morning readiness reading. And you can see it gives me a score of between 1 and 10. So you can see last Sunday or what was it? Last Saturday was a 5. I slept extremely poorly that night and I'm going to click in. And you can see my heart rate, HRV, scored 71, not bad. And my heart rate scored 66, which is just my heart rate, which is fine. We're looking for anywhere from 60 to 80 beats per minute for the heart rate is a pretty normal heart rate. And so remember that coherence graph that I showed you earlier? It was very smooth at all the tops and bottoms. So you can see it here around one minute in, um, if you look at the bottom chart of this, uh, bottom part of this graph, you can see there's a couple moments where... Um, my heart is, is not doing what it should be. 
And then, yeah, there's a bunch of other amazing, amazing data that you get out of this, and I don't know how to interpret all of it yet. The ones that you really want to pay attention to are SDNN and RMSSD. I haven't looked a lot into SDNN yet, but let's look at RMSSD. So if we look at RMSSD, I scored a 5, and you can see my RMSSD was extremely high. And actually, I've got a link for explaining RMSSD. So RMSSD is strongly correlated between the uh, between your nervous system. So RMSSD is commonly used as an index of vagally media mediated cardiac control, so heart control via the vagus nerve, which captures the respiratory sinus arrhythmia, arrhythmia RSA, and the frequent changes in the heart rate occurring in response to respiration. With a with a uh, Citation there. During inhalation, the heart rate speeds up. During exhalation, the heart rate slows down. RMSSD is an accepted measure of parasympathetic autonomic nervous system activity that correlates very well with the HF or frequency domain analysis discussed above. So basically think RMSSD, condition of autonomic nervous system and recovery. So let's go on on Monday. My RMSSD was also quite high. So let's go back all the way back to Monday. And you can see I swore to 7, so not as good. And then we're going to go over to Monday, or we'll go over to today, which I had a 10. I'm going to click View All Data, RMSSD. And you can see that yesterday was a 9. My RMSSD was a little higher. And Wednesday, I think, was also a 10. So let me go back to Wednesday. Boom, Wednesday was a 10. So RMSSD correlated with high readiness score and also your um, ability to uh, exercise. So, and I want to show you something is that, you know, oh, RMSSD low equals good, right? Well, when it's too high, you get a low score. And then you can see last Sunday, we'll go to last Sunday, it was very low. So I had a readiness score of nine. And we can see RMSSD for that day was a little too low. So it looks like my ideal RMSSD is falling around maybe 75 or so, which that's just where I'm at right now. Now, what's also cool about this app and using the Polar device is if I scroll down from the home screen here, I can see a population comparison. And I can see that my HRV score, I'm kind of like on like right in the middle, top of the bell curve. But you can also see uh, where it's at for your age range, your gender range. And I can also compare my RMSSD. I'm actually quite uh, high up in the RMSSD for the population, which is really great. So... Um, well, not necessarily, it's just where I'm at, right? So, yeah, but you can get dig into all kinds of cool stuff with this. So, how this is helping me heal is, this lets me know how much I can train that day, really. And I found, and I'm going to show you a specific example. So, here's the Polar Beat app. And within the Polar Beat app, I can track my um, exercise. So, each weekend or so, if I'm not traveling... I've been doing a lot of traveling the past couple weeks, but now we're back. But each weekend, I go for about a three-mile hike with the same pack. And so my last hike, I kind of messed up the tracking just a little bit. But that was the day that I had a five um, a five on my readiness score, and my RMSSD was higher. So I messed up. I started the tracking in the middle a little bit. So we miscounted the start, which is the bottom of the trail there. But you can see that there's these different zones of exercise or different zones of heart rate based on my age and my weight and I think my height. So you can see in zone two, uh, zone two is where I have found anecdotally to be a lot of people who have uh, like got COVID and then ha experienced a sudden loss in exercise ability. They said that a lot of zone two exercise helped them to regain their ability. And so for me, I have also found that zone two exercise helps me a lot. And so you can see if we dig into this graph here, I'm going to get back into this guy. You can see that a lot of my activity, 18 minutes of it was in the green, which is zone three, which is about 135 to 154. I would say I was cruising around 144 for a lot of this hike. And a lot of that uh, activity was kind of more on an uphill piece. And I find that I don't, I don't tolerate uh, going up hills a ton. My heart rate tends to get a lot higher when I go on the hills. And then you can see there's a sharp drop into zone one and a little of zone two. And that's when I got onto a much flatter area. 
And then you can see I instantly, uh, very quickly spiked up into zone three and even touched zone four a little bit when I started going uh, when I started going on a hill again. And then zone two, and then I finished my hike. So um, I I ended this hike early. My intention was to go a little bit longer, but it's really good that I had this data and I could see um, that I was working out too hard. And so this let me know that that I was working out too hard and I cut it short. Now let's go over and check out the hike from the week before, which you can see the HR average and HR max was pretty much the same, but you can see the balance of activity between um, zone two and zone three in this one. It's actually much more weighted to zone two, which is where I want to be. So this is how I'm using HRV to heal and to gauge my exercise and the apps I'm using and the devices and everything. And I hope it helps you. So that's how I'm doing everything. I wake up, I put in my readiness score, and then I uh, kind of calibrate my my exercise to to my uh, my readiness, which is working really great for me. And I'm using Zone Two to do a lot of conditioning, which is not super hard activity. And yeah, hope it helps.